We continue with our sermon series entitled, Power Belongs to God. Today we want to look at Psalm 75. Verse 1 begins, Unto thee, O God, do we give thanks. Unto thee do we give thanks. For that thy name is near, thy wondrous works declare. When I shall receive the congregation, I will judge uprightly. The earth and all the inhabitants thereof are dissolved. I bear up the pillars of it. I said unto the fools, deal not foolishly, and to the wicked, lift not up the horn, lift not up your horn on high. Speak not with a stiff neck, for promotion cometh neither from the east, nor from the west, nor from the south, but God is the judge. He put it down one and he set it up another. For in the hand of the Lord, there is a cup and the wine is red. It is full of mixture and he poureth out of the same. But the dregs thereof, all the wicked of the earth shall wring them out and drink them. But I will declare forever. I will sing praises to the God of Jacob. All the horns of the wicked also will I cut off, but the horns of the righteous shall be exalted. We like to focus on verse number six and seven. For promotion cometh neither from the east nor from the west nor from the south, but God is the judge. He put it down one and set it up another. I like to preach from this thought today, God's power to promote. Man has had a quest for power ever since the fall in the garden. It began when we see that Cain uh, killed his brother, Abel. And since then, there has been this quest among humankind for power to the extent that for some, they will do anything to gain power power. The psalmist for us today, though, helps us to focus ourselves to understand that power comes from God. The psalmist Asaph begins uh, with verse 1 with thanksgiving. And may I say that's always a good place to begin, giving thanks unto Almighty God. He begins with thanksgiving, but then he also states that God's name is declared uh, through his wondrous works. Uh, we can uh, see the presence of Almighty God, not only in the natural uh, habitat that we uh, dwell in and around, but also those things that God does that are wondrous, that are marvelous, that are supernatural. Amen. Verse number two, uh, there's a shifting. It seems as though in verse number two, God begins to speak and says this, that God sets a time, that God, uh, if you will, the picture is that of a judge who enters the court and calls the court to order. Yes, he says, when I shall receive the congregation, I will judge uprightly. There is an appointed time that God will summon the congregation of humanity before him, that then those who uh, will be adjudicated will be adjudicated that if you trust in the Lord, then we have Jesus Christ as our advocate. But for those who do not trust in the Lord, they will be adjudicated by the absolute letter of the law. Well, he goes on to say this in verse number three, that the earth and the inhabitants dissolve, they fade, they weaken. When we look at our social, political, 
economic uh, condition, not only of today, but throughout history, no matter how powerful nations have been, ultimately they dissolve, they fade, they weaken. And yet, uh, the psalmist here in verse number three, God, I believe, is speaking and says that when all other things fade and weaken, he says, I bear up the pillars. It is God that is holding up this nation. It is not those who are in political office. It is not those who control the economic levers of society, but it is God that is holding up the nation. Well, uh, verse number four uh, begins a warning. I believe the psalmist begins to speak again and he says, now here's a warning to the fool. Don't act foolishly. Uh, there's a scripture that says that the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Don't behave foolishly. Don't live. Here's a warning. Don't live and act like that. God is not real. Yes, God is real. But he goes on to say, not only to the fool to not act foolishly, but he says of the wicked, lift not up your horn. Horn symbolizes power. Yes, there's a warning to the wicked to not uh, try to use power to harm and to crush others. Then it reiterates it in the next verse. For the next verse, verse 5, warns the wicked again, lift not up your horn on high. So now it seems like the wicked will even dare to take uh, what they consider to be their power uh, on earth and even try to uh, lift it up on high as to challenge God Almighty. Yes, there's a warning to the wicked to not be stiff-necked, not to be stubborn and prideful in what they perceive to be their power. But he says uh, this, verses 6 and 7, power belongs to God. He says promotion does not come uh, from the east or the west or from the south, but God is the judge. He put it down one and set it up another. Yes, power is in the hand of Almighty God. He goes on to then say this, that those who uh, are opposed to God, in the hand of the Lord is a cup. This cup is filled with wine. The wine is red and the cup is full. Speaking of the uh, point where God is tired of dealing with and giving opportunity to those who are uh, opposing him. Now, court is in session. Time is now at hand. There will be that time where they must give an account and stand before God Almighty. Now, notice this. The Lord has the cup in his hand. It's filled with wine. It's a cup of wine, not a cup of coffee, not a cup of tea, but this is a cup of wine. It is red and full. The wicked will ring out and drink the dregs. I believe that the psalmist is trying to tell us here today, church, that they're going to have to drink every drop that's in that cup of the Lord's wrath and the Lord's vengeance on those who have opposed him. But not only uh, every drop, but even the residue in the cup will they have to drink. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. Psalmist then closes by saying, and I believe that now he goes back to the perspective of the worshiper. I will sing praises to God. Yes, he began with thanksgiving. And now he's going to end up saying, I'm going to praise God. Will you praise God today? Amen. Do you recognize that power belongs to God? The last verse then says, all the horns or the power. Remember, the horn symbolizes power. All of the horns 
of the wicked will I cut off. God says the day is coming where their power will be no more. He will cut it off. But of the righteous, listen to this church. He says of the righteous, uh, I will uh, exalt the righteous. The horn or the power of the righteous shall be exalted or lifted up. Well, what does he have in view here? What is the application? I do believe that one application then is that God promises that for those who love him, trust in him, will live for him and worship him, the righteous, that he will exalt them. Remember, promotion don't come from any human source, not from the east, west, or the south, but it's God that setteth up one and then bringeth down the other. Yes, Power belongs to God. And God says he will give then to those who love him. Their horn will be exalted or lifted up. Lifted up on your job. Yes, God will give you power to endure uh, that job situation that you will be victorious. God will give you power in your home no matter what is going on. The righteous God has promised to exalt their horn. You just keep living right. You just keep giving right, doing right, loving right. And God will exalt. Yes, God will lift you up. Yes, he will give you power. Your, your horn will be exalted. Why? Because power belongs to God. Yes, promotion doesn't come. Exaltation does not come from a human source but it comes from God. Why? Because power belongs to God. May God bless you. May God keep his eye prayer until we meet again.